In Instagram. Reality. Look at me living in an oven. Even if he wants a little bit of the little bit of camera time. Oh look here. Ah. What's up guys, I'm Lex and today we're going to be looking at a complete arm workout to develop fuller, thicker, bigger looking arms. And stick with me to the end of the video, I'm going to give you a £2 or $3 tip that will change your entire arm workout. So the first thing you need to know when we're talking about arm workouts is what you need to be working because you want to be a grower, not just a shower. And by that I mean understanding where the size in an arm actually comes from. A lot of people are focused on biceps, obsessed with biceps, doing five, six, seven exercises on biceps alone. Biceps don't make big arms. What make big arms? Triceps. Triceps are two thirds of your entire arm. So we need to be focusing on this whole area to develop that thick, fuller look that you want. And that also means focusing on the outer heads, the inner heads, the peaks, and the full ranges of movement that's gonna allow that muscle to work properly, help you connect with the mind to muscle, and develop that thicker, fuller looking arm. To do that, we're gonna take a look at three or four of my favorite exercises for the biceps and triceps, and we're gonna look at some variations for each of those exercises in case maybe the machines or whatnot aren't available to you, or just some different options for you to be able to throw in to keep things interesting. If he bangs that weight again, I'm gonna go take the weight and shove it right up his poop chute. Exercise numero uno is the classic hammer curl. You're gonna rotate your hands over and hold it like so. Now, there's a little trick here though that's gonna make this exercise feel completely different. And it's as simple as moving the hand a couple of inches. So as a standard, what a lot of people will do is they will grip the dumbbell here like you would with a standard curl. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna slide our hand up to the top, right under the head of the dumbbell. And this is how we're gonna hold it for the hammer. Why? Because now when we're holding it, the weight is angled backwards. By creating this angle here, we're creating tension on the bicep at the full extension point. We're also increasing that load and tension at the top part of the contraction because now the weight is not pushing over in an arced motion, so it's not curving over the top. If I hold it here and come up to the top, now the weight's forcing into my shoulder and it's going away from the bicep. Maintaining it here keeps the load on the bicep and makes it work from top to bottom. Simple three sets, eight to 12 reps, you should find that the same loads that you're used to will now hit you even harder. Now it's one of my favorite exercises and I love it, but one of the great things about it is it works the outer head of the bicep. So that's also gonna help you with the thickness of the arms from kind of a front view. The side view is all about the peak, but to keep the thickness of the arm from front to back, that's where we need to be working the outer as well as the inner. Now before you start bitching and moaning at me, I'm not in the squat rack. I'm just on the edge, pressing up against the glass box. So there's plenty of single arm movements out there, but one of the vital ones that we need to focus is on the barbell work. The reason for this is it's more of like a compound movement for biceps, although essentially there isn't a total compound movement. This one's a good one because it makes you have to stabilize your core, it makes you have to concentrate on that mind to muscle plus fixing your posture to maintain concentration on the muscle. Huge things about working the arms or any isolated movements is that focus from the mind to muscle connection. If you do not have that, if you're swinging through, if you are shifting and not lifting, you're not gonna see the gains that you want. By utilizing a barbell, we're gonna be hitting, again, the inner head of the bicep, but we're also gonna be hitting the forearms, we're gonna be working our core, abs, scapula, shoulders are gonna have to stay in place. There's a whole lot of things going on here. We're gonna cover that now. We're gripping just at the very edge of that first point of where the grip comes onto the bar. From here, we're gonna step back. We're gonna engage our scapula. So remember, if you haven't watched the videos already, I'll link them below. There is a full thing about postural setting here, and it's up two, back one, drop one. So we go up two, back one, drop one. So now I'm relaxed in this position, but my scapula's set and engaged. From here, I'm gonna squeeze my glutes, keep my knees soft, and what that's gonna do is gonna help me engage my core and stop me being able to swing. Keep my elbows pinned and curl up to a natural contraction point. There's no need to bring it up to your head, just to here, nice and contracted. Then on the way down, we're gonna release and carefully extend fully. What we don't want to do is snap down to the bottom. The biggest part of an injury risk when it comes to training your biceps with a bar is that very bottom part of the movement. So at the very bottom, as it comes towards the end of the rest, if you're feeling a lot of tension there before putting the bar down, just dip the body forwards a little bit before replacing the bar. Try to avoid letting the bar come all the way to a negative and then dumping the bar here because it's that minor movement, that last 10%, where there's a lot of stress on the bicep tendon insertion point and that's when you can tear a bicep. As with anything else, we don't want to be doing mountains and mountains of reps. The bicep is a tiny muscle essentially compared to the tricep. So we're gonna look again for that kind of six to 10 rep range. So in total, it should look something like this. Curl, you'll notice there's no body swing. You'll notice it's controlled on the negative. And I'm focusing on really squeezing that bicep all the way through and maintaining my body posture on that negative. So what I'm not doing 
is this. See the difference? So a great finisher here is an overhand curl. This is great because not only does it incorporate, again, it's bringing that outer head in, it's bringing that thickness, but it's gonna incorporate the forearm. This is a great way of introducing them into your arm workouts on a regular consistent basis. For this, we're gonna be using, if you're unfamiliar, this is the bar that you're looking for, the wiggly one. There'll only be one in your gym. There's no variations of it. So if you've got the wiggly one, you've got the right one. The easy curl bar. Now the trick with this is, if you hold it suicide grip, like so, the bar's gonna to wanna to roll in your hands. Get your thumbs under that first indent, right where the grip starts. By keeping the thumbs under that first indent, it's gonna stop the bar rolling, and you'll be able to focus on that mind-to-muscle contraction, especially at the top point. Here again, we're looking at posture, so we're looking at keeping the scapula engaged, soft knees, glutes, core, all of that, just like with the other bar. But with the overhand, we're gonna be looking to keep those wrists strong. So don't allow flexion at the wrists, front or backwards. And the idea here is you're gonna take the knuckles, and you're going to curl them up to a contraction point so the knuckles point into the shoulders. So avoid this, strong wrists. You're going to feel this one run right down the bicep into the brachia wackia ding dong, the forearm muscle. We're going to set scapula engaged, core, glutes, soft knees. We're going to curl up and squeeze. Again, don't allow the elbows to move forwards or backwards. They're going to want to move forwards on the positive and backwards on the negative. Try and keep them pinned. We're going to focus on a squeeze at the top squeezing tightly with the little finger on your fist. You want to squeeze the bar hard. That's going to help engage that forearm even further. So squeeze the bar hard, contraction at the top. Allow that negative to move slowly down, making sure that the bar moves out and away from the body. What the body's going to want to do is it's going to want to dip and do this. So you see a lot of people end up doing this on the negative, And again, they're losing all that tension. So in reality, this is what the movement looks like. And it feels real good. Good God, y'all. <laughs> Quick pro tip, if you don't like doing the bar, if it aggravates your shoulders, elbow, whatever, a little bit of a variation. Dumbbells, you're gonna start in a neutral position down from your side. From here, you're just gonna come up and rotate over. Same as before, but using dumbbells. So come down neutral, then over the top. Boom, like so. Actually requires a lot more stabilization in terms of individual sides. So if you tend to have an imbalance or a leading side, Maybe give that one a go. I keep it going, I'm rolling and flowing, I'm coasting, I got them all trolling me right. I just keep growing and showing them, knowing I'm moaning this fall, you can catch me outside. Gonna get them all with a little payback. Never gonna fall, I'ma stay on the attack. Put them up against the wall as I finish every track. Never gonna stall, no, I'm never gonna slack. I've been like working and learning and searching for something to push my shit over the edge. So there we go, that's biceps done. A really nice workout that you can incorporate very easily. If you like what you've seen so far, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to hit that notification bell and make sure that you're notified every time every video is uploaded so you don't miss anything. With that said, let's move on. First tricep exercise. So before we get started, just to cover all the confusion points, so people got obsessed with kind of working the different heads of the tricep. There are three heads to the triceps, and we can see those. We've got the lateral, the medial, and then we've got the long head here. But we need to be working them all individually, but also you have to understand that whenever you do any movement for triceps where you're extending the elbows and squeezing, the triceps as a whole are going to get worked. But by rolling the elbows out, we can hit a little bit more of the lateral. By rolling them in, we can hit some more of the medial. And then a lot of our pressing motions where we're keeping the elbows tight, that's gonna help hit that long head. So we're gonna cover all bases here, but the thing to understand is when you're doing triceps, as a rule, everything's getting worked, but we can tweak it just a little bit to make it hit one head over another a little bit more. But don't get too obsessive. Just do the work, do it well, but make sure more than anything that you're getting that mind to muscle connection. So working that long head, this is the bit that's going to give us that depth from front to back. You'll be used to seeing maybe this motion a lot of the time, but what happens with this is, sometimes when we extend, when we get heavier weights on, the body wants to lean backwards, the ribcage expands and it can get a little bit messy. I'm going to show you a little trick using this preacher curl to help stop that. And it's real easy. You're going to put your lower back on the pad and sit back to front on this machine. What that's going to allow you to do is set your posture in a really rigid fashion without a lot of extra energy. We're going to be able to stabilize because we've got support from the back. We're going to be able to pull our core in because we've got something to pull our lower abs in against. So think about keeping your lower abs engaged. From here, we're going to engage your scapula, put it back over our head as we would normally. You're going to grip with the inner part, most part of the bar. So we're going to try and keep this close. That's going to allow us to then roll our elbows in if we want to keep it more on that kind of long head and medial, or we can roll the elbows out to help bring in a bit more of the lateral. Whatever feels more comfortable or whatever you need to work more, completely up to you. For me, I like to pin the elbows tight. I'm really squeezing here and getting a full stretch and extension on that long head, the full range of movement. And from here, I'm gonna drive up palms to the ceiling, 
extend through, keeping the elbows in place. So what you'll see isn't happening here, is what I'm not doing is allowing the elbows to come too far forward or too far back. They're sticking where they should. Imagine there's a pad under your elbows here, stopping them moving. And this is the motion we're gonna to wanna to see. I've got my core braced, posture set, scapula engaged, and I'm driving evenly, palms to the ceiling. So there's a really simple way of making a good exercise great. So everybody gets obsessed with triceps on cables, a lot of the push downs, and constantly hitting that lateral head. We need to be concentrating on this long head if that's gonna give us that thickness from this side position. It's gonna create that depth here, and that's what's really gonna give us that thicker, fuller looking arm. And for that, we need a bit more of a compound movement, something that keeps the elbows close to the body, but is a pressing motion. And a perfect one is a close grip bench press. So we're gonna go through that now. It doesn't have to be super heavy, but it's obviously, with it being a compound movement on a barbell, it's gonna allow you to be a little bit heavier than you would be with dumbbells or on extensions where you're gonna be pressing and limited with your body weight going through the motion. So grip wise with this, you want to be pinning your elbows to your side. What we're gonna be looking for here is to be coming down for our side, driving up, squeezing through with the elbows. So the concentration here is driving through the elbows to that full extension. Unlike with chest where obviously the elbows are a little bit wider and we're driving through to a higher point. We're gonna keep this low, we're gonna keep it around the sternum. And we're gonna be pressing up and extending through. So almost if you look from the side here with the elbow, it's gonna be pushing through in that arch kind of motion. Whereas with the bench press, it would be more, tend to be a little bit more linear and come straight up, straight down. One way of thinking about this is like the way you would drive your hips through on a straight leg deadlift. You wouldn't lift the same as a deadlift because you're driving through the hips. So even though it looks like another motion, it's got a complete different style of movement. So forget about bench pressing when you're doing this and think about elbow extension, keeping the bar a little bit lower towards that sternum and driving through with the power. So going for your natural grip, you want to be pulling your elbows to your side, reach up to the bar. Again, it's usually gonna to tend to be around where these grip points start. Now for me, I have a really bad habit of suicide gripping everything. That's not such a bad thing, but ideally, if you want to be pressing more weight, you don't wanna be using a suicide grip, you want to be using a full grip and you wanna be squeezing the bar hard with your hands. That's gonna allow you to transfer energy from the feet through to the hands and through into the bar. But for this, because I'm gonna do it a little bit lighter, I'm gonna show you with the palms to the ceiling style approach, which is the suicide grip. From here, I'm gonna bring it off. I'm then going to roll my elbows in because I don't want this movement going out to the lateral head. I want to keep it as tight as possible. From here, I'm gonna lower it down to the sternum, which is much lower than you would with a bench. See, with a bench press, we might be here a little bit higher. We're gonna go about an inch lower. From there, as with the bench press, we're gonna drive through our feet. We're gonna squeeze our glutes, but I'm thinking about extending my arms from my elbows. So pushing through palms to the ceiling, extend arms, and there's that elbow contraction. So what I'm not doing like with the bench press is I'm not bringing the bar up and over the chest area. I'm keeping it over that sternum. And that's what's gonna keep that tension and that stress on the triceps. So what you should be feeling this one is you should be feeling it's running right down that long head and squeezing all the way through. You will feel it in the medial and a little bit in the lateral because they're gonna help stabilize. But if you're not feeling that focus here, think about tightening up those elbows, especially on the positive. That's when they're gonna wanna flare. Plus keeping that bar lower than you would a bench press. So bench press, you wanna come to here. For the close grip triceps, just try coming in an inch lower. Just below that sternum area. I'm gonna show you a nice exercise which has a little bit of a grip switch that you can put in, which is gonna take it from a lateral onto a medial head. Again, like I said, they're all gonna get worked, whatever, but here's just a nice little variation that you utilize. It's single arm, so if you have an imbalance or leading side, this is a great way of evening that up and making sure that you're focusing on each arm equally. Taking a cable with a single handle horseshoe or rope, it can kind of be up to you because you can go overhand or hammer grip, but then we're also gonna do an under grip. Overhand is gonna help hit that lateral. So it's gonna be similar to doing the bar with the lateral extensions, the triangle bar, same thing. But again, single arm, working each arm individually makes you focus a little bit more on the contraction. So from here, what we're gonna do, set the shoulders back. We're gonna engage our core, squeeze our glutes. Just engage them a little bit. That's gonna stabilize those hips. If you want to, you can put a hand on something to help stabilize in front, or as I like to do, you can put it behind your back. From here, now what we're looking to do is extend straight down, and squeeze that tricep at the bottom. So we're driving our palm to the floor. So allow a little bit of flexion in the wrist. As you come down, that wrist is gonna flex. That allows us to get that contraction, this connection here. On the way back up, keep that elbow pinned. Keep the shoulder stable. That keeps that tension and stretch on the lateral, on that tricep. What we don't wanna see on that negative is the elbows moving forward, the shoulder disconnecting, which you will see a lot of. On the positive, we don't wanna see driving through with the body, allowing that shoulder to come pronated. This 
is just shifting, it's not lifting. So again, six to 10 reps on everything, but on a weight where you're able to focus, where you're able to contract, where that failure point isn't failure to be able to lift the weight, but failure to be able to maintain the technique. That's true failure. If you just drive through regardless, all you're gonna do is increase your injury risk and decrease the actual potential that the exercise has. So with that said, this is a three exercises in one motion, depending on what you wanna hit. Overhand for that lateral, then we've got a hammer grip, which is gonna help hit that medial and the lateral and pin that elbow. But if you want to hit that medial, which is the part in between, that long and the lateral head, this is gonna help develop that thickness on the arm here and create that depth. Then we want to use an underhand grip, pinning that elbow to our side. All the same rules apply for all three grips. Keeping that shoulder in place, engaging the core, soft knees, glutes engaged, allowing that shoulder to stay stable, keeping that elbow pinned and get that nice full contraction. You should be able to see the muscles working, contracting, the blood filling the area. And plus, because you're doing single arms at a time, you shouldn't need a lot of rest. So this is gonna help decrease your time. Go from one arm into the next and then back to the other arm again. Do not do both arms and then take a well-deserved, undeserved rest. A little bit of a pro tip on this, by doing it single arms, you're also able to self-spot. And by that I mean, when you start to struggle and you can't get that full contraction, take the free hand, place it on the one doing the work, two fingers and simply help push it through and drive. So that's gonna help you keep that technique and keep that focus and save you from swinging through like a chimp. And the city show me love She gon' fit me like a glove Sippin' whiskey, feeling buzz R.I.P. Rest in peace R.I.P. Rest in peace R.I.P. Rest in peace R.I.P. Rest in peace Yeah so there you have it, there's some three really great movements that you can use for triceps, so obviously that end one, you're able to use that with the bar, with the V-bar, the same rules apply. So there's plenty of ways that you can adapt what I've shown you today to help, but I did promise something else, I promise you that for a couple of dollars, a couple of pounds, I would be able to improve your entire arm workouts. And it's very simple, with one little thing from a hardware store. So for a couple of pounds, you can get something that's long, a little bit bendy, but makes you thicker than a snicker. I'm talking about pipe lagging. That's right, this you can pick up from any hardware store. It's simply lagging for pipe, it's a plumber's tool. This will wrap around any bar in the gym. You can cut a long end to use on barbells and then you can cut the other side into shorter parts for single hand grips to use around dumbbells. This works exactly the same as things like fat grips do for a fraction of the price. By increasing the thickness of the bar, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna make the arms work harder. We're gonna be making the forearms work harder, our grip work harder, and overall improve the difficulty of our workouts whilst keeping the same movements, same weights, and same exercises. And that's why they call me the postman because when I promise you something, I always deliver. So there you go, some simple hints and tips that can make your arms look better overall, improve your workouts, and a simple, cheap, and cheerful little trick that you can go utilize straight away. I guarantee you will feel that immediately. If you've liked this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the notification bell and subscribe so that you don't miss any of these uploads. If you've liked this video, don't forget to check the rest of the channel. There's tons of these tutorials that are going up on a weekly basis. There's also gonna be some more vlogs and some more PRs with my deadlift. So until then, I've been Lex. Thanks for the support. I'll see you in the next one.